So this graph is showing how entropy can change with temperature. Um, so entropy is going to increase whenever you increase temperature. We've already looked at that before. Um, and you can see here, so if you have a solid and you increase the temperature, the entropy goes up until you reach a point, until you reach the melting point. And then when you're melting, see how the temperature doesn't change? This is an isothermal process. The temperature is not increasing. You're adding heat to it, but the temp all that heat's going to change um, the substance from a solid to a liquid, and that's going to increase the entropy, because liquids have more entropy than solids. And then you increase the temperature more uh, of the liquid until you reach the boiling point, and then when you boil it, the, te the temperature doesn't change, but the entropy increases even more. So you can see this line is a little bit longer than this one. Uh, when you go from a liquid to a gas, the entropy always increases more. There's a bigger change in entropy there than it is when you go from a solid to a liquid. But in general, solids um, have the, the least amount of entropy because they're the most ordered, and gases are going to be higher in, in entropy because they're, they're less disordered. They have more disorder. They're less ordered, more disorder. This is a table of just, this is a small table of standard molar, molar entropies. You can, you, there's a bigger table in the back of the book that has entropy, it has enthalpy, it has Gibbs free energy of all these substances. We're going to need these sorts of tables when we do the lab and some of the homework problems. Uh, and, and we want to look at the difference in entropy from the reactants and the products, and, and that will look at the entropy of the overall um, reaction, the entropy change. So, in general, the gases have the highest entropy, and then liquids and solids. Larger, more complex molecules are going to have greater entropy, so as long as you're looking at things in the same phase of matter, so these are all gases, this is propane, um, liquid, uh, ethane, and um, methane, uh, you can see, oops, nope, they're not in the table. Um, you can see that uh, propane is going to have the highest amount of entropy because it has more bonds that it can rotate and, um, and vibrate around, and bonds that it can vibrate. So if you want to look at the change in entropy for your reaction, you're going to look at the entropy of, of your products and your reactants. You're looking at this, the, the superscript zero up there. That just means, we'll say delta S not of the products minus the reactants. Um, that is under. That means everything's under standard conditions. So whenever you look at a table like like this, the, everything's under standard conditions. The reference energy uh, temperature is usually 298 Kelvin. That's that's room temperature. Um, but the standard conditions are defined later on in a, in a different table in this in this chapter. Um, but really briefly, if you have a gas, it means the uh, it's one atmosphere. The pressure is one atmosphere. If you have a liquid or a solid, it means it's pure. And if you have an aqueous solution then the concentration is one molar. Those are your standard conditions. Uh, and if you set those standard conditions, then anything in the table um, will, or basically any reaction that's done under those conditions, you can, you can compare one to uh, another. And, and so that's what goes in the table under standard conditions. So here's our reaction, or our, react, our equation, products minus reactants. Um, N represents the moles of, your, uh, of each substance, and so does M. Uh, they are stoichiometric coefficients, so you need to take those into consideration. Everything that's in the, the table is for like one mole, so if you have two in your equation, then you want to multiply by two. So here's an example. Um, so calculate the change in entropy of a uh, system, so it says look for delta S. Here's your reaction, one mole of N2, three moles of H2, two moles of NH3. These are your reactants. And, and this is your product. So you're going to you're going to look up the entropy values in the table. If you have a book, just look up I think it's appendix D. If you don't have a book, just google thermodynamic data table and then something like this will come up. Uh, and this has a whole bunch of different uh, compounds in it. They're usually in order by um, alphabetical order by main element. So if you're looking for nitrogen, you have to scroll all the way down to N and then you can see here's N2. And uh, there's a bunch of things in this table. You have delta H, you have delta G, you have S. You're going to need these two tables when you do the lab, um, and, and this one as well. Uh, we'll talk about these later in, in, the, in the chapter. We've already calculated delta H before, and again, it's always just products minus reactants, whether you're looking at H, G, or S. Uh, and so N2, here you want to look up N2 gas, it's 191.5. And then NH3, if you see NH3, has, you have an entry for gas, and you have an entry for aqueous. And those numbers are really different, so make sure when you're looking at your reaction that you choose the right phase of matter when you go to the table, otherwise you'll get a totally wrong answer. Uh, and then to look for H, you're just going to go under um, alphabetical order here again, scroll up to H2, and there it's 130.6. Uh, These numbers will change from table to table, not by much, like in another table this might be 130.5. 
Uh, it depends on how recent the table is, and the tables are constantly being updated as the experiments improve. So the one in the back of the book might be a little bit older than one that you might find online. And so when you do your homework, if, if it doesn't match up my answers exactly, it's because we may be using a different table. But the it shouldn't it shouldn't change that by that much. If you're changing by like if the difference is in you know hundreds of thousands there's a bigger issue there. If it's just like one decimal place, it's just more of an annoyance, um, but you're probably doing it the right way. All right, so we pulled these numbers out of the table, and now we're going to plug them into this equation, the products minus reactants, and don't forget your stoichiometric coefficients. So NH3, we'll start with the products. I have two NH3, so I'm going to do two moles times 192.3, right, because that's where that is. I my moles cancel. I get a number here, and then I'm going to subtract this whole thing, everything in brackets here. I'm going to add up all my reactants, and I'll add up all my products, and then I do products minus reactants. So for um, nitrogen, I only have one mole of this, and I have three moles of hydrogen, so I'm going to multiply that by three. And so when you work all that out, you get negative 198.7 uh, joules per kelvin, so the moles do cancel there, so you get joules per kelvin. And it's negative, so what does a negative delta S mean? It's becoming more ordered become less disordered, the entropy is decreasing, and so if you look at this reaction, it kind of makes sense. I have three, I have four moles of gas on my reactant side, I have two moles of gas on my product side, so the entropy is definitely uh, decreasing. So, you know, approximate it first, and then and then check your answer to make sure you get what you think you were going to get. All right, the last thing we're going to do is uh, try to derive a new equation. So we're going to try to derive the, Gib the Gibbs free energy equation. This is what it looks like, delta G is delta H minus T delta S. Uh, where delta G, this is what we're trying to find. Um, delta H is the enthalpy, T is the temperature, and delta S is the entropy. So if you don't like derivations, you can just close your eyes, you can skip this section. This is the last thing we're going to do in this video. Um, but this is the equation we're trying to derive. So if you had a uh, an isothermal reaction, remember isothermal means that the delta S is equal to Q over T, and we know that the entropy of the universe is equal to delta H plus delta S, uh, so if this is zero, then if it's a reversible process, then we can bring this over here on the other side, and we have delta S of the, sy of the surroundings is equal to negative delta S of the system, uh, which is equal to, so delta S of the, of the surroundings is negative Q of the system over T. And if we're at constant pressure, which we're always going to be at constant pressure, Q is equal to delta H, so then we get delta S of the surroundings is equal to negative delta H of the system over T. So the subscripts are really important here. You have surroundings, you have system, you have the universe. The universe is really hard to measure. The system is a lot easier to measure because you're going to define what the system is. So what we're trying to do here is, is, is basically relate things that we know about the universe. So we know like if, the del if delta S of the universe is positive, it's a... Uh, spontaneous process. If it's if it's negative, uh, if it's equal to zero, then then it's not. Um, so what we're what we're really trying to find uh, the subscripts are going to be important. Is this what I'm saying? Delta S of the surroundings is negative delta H of the system over T. Now I'm going to take this and plug it back into this equation. So I know delta S of the universe is the system plus the surroundings. So delta S of the universe is the delta S of the system, and then this is what the surroundings equal, right? It's negative delta H of the system over T. Now my right side of my equation has everything to do with the system, which is great because that's what I can measure. So if I multiply both sides by negative t, so I get negative t delta s over here, I get negative t delta s over here, and then my negative t cancels with my negative t on the bottom there, and I just get delta h. Um, still, everything is with respect to the system. I'm going to rearrange it a little bit, so I put you know delta h minus t delta s of the system, and I'm going to make up a new variable, variable called Gibbs free energy, and Gibbs free energy is equal to negative T delta S of the universe. Remember, the universe is really hard to measure, but now we can relate it to measuring things, the, the system, which is easy to measure. Um, so finally, delta S of the universe, if it's positive, if it's greater than zero, this whole term, this negative T delta S of the universe is going to be negative. Uh, so delta G is negative for a spontaneous process. Delta G will be positive for a non-spontaneous process.